Stay tuned to the end of this episode where I'm going to show you how to win the Redivis RT85. And have a good day. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Ham Radio Dude, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the Redivis RT85. This is the third part of a three part series. And today I'll discuss some of the technical features of this radio, as well as some of the physical features, just the things I like about this radio, and I'll probably compare it a little bit to the Baofeng UV5R. If you haven't already, please consider liking, commenting, but more importantly, subscribing to this channel. It really helps me out in the future know whether or not to make more videos like this, or if there's a video that more people prefer. As I mentioned before, this radio is dual band, dual standby. It's a VHF, UHF, a dual mode radio capable of FM only, so there's no digital with this radio. Uh, but for the price point, I don't think you would expect it. The price point being around 35 US dollars, uh, comparable to the Baofeng, which is somewhere around 21 to $32, depending on where you look. The LCD in the front is a dot matrix LCD, and so it looks a little bit sharper to me than the Baofeng UV5R. Now you don't have a backlight that could change colors like the UV5R. The front programming panel or the FPP uh, is pretty nice and there are shortcuts on the keypad for the most commonly used features. Purchasing this radio, it currently looks like you purchased this radio through Redivis in China and so you might expect a little bit of a shipping delay if you're purchasing this radio. Whereas you can find Bofungs pretty much anywhere, United States resellers and whatnot. With it though, this radio has a two-year warranty through Redivis, and that's kind of nice, but really the support was even nicer. I contacted support to ask them about one of the questions I had in another episode. And the question was, is, is it possible that in a firmware update, we can get a skip button on here? Because if you're listening to channels, you might want to skip one. For example, if you programmed NOAA Weather Radio in here, every time it came up, you'd have to hit the up arrow to skip the channel temporarily. When it came back around, you would have to hit the up arrow again to skip that channel temporarily. And it's not convenient. Actually, the Baofeng does the same thing. But the support team, or James over at Redivis, he he contacted me and said, hey, you know what, we're going to go ahead and look into this and see if we can't maybe update the firmware to, to add a skip button. Is it going to happen? I don't know. But what I will say is it was nice to be able to talk to somebody and get some kind of an answer. The battery on this radio is a 7.4 volt, 1400 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. And I found that if I had this tuned into NOAA weather radio at about half the volume, it lasted or the battery lasted roughly uh, 10 hours, uh, give or take a 15 minute window because I was checking every 15 minutes. 10 hours is probably not the greatest as far as things go. Like, for example, I know the Baofeng has a 1800 milliamp hour battery and I tend to get about an extra hour and some change out of the Baofeng battery. So just keep that in mind. While I'm editing this video, I wanted to jump on real quick and, and also mention the charge time on these batteries. Uh, I had a full charge in just over three hours on the Redivis radio. And with the Bofeng, respectively, because it is a bigger battery, it was slightly over four hours for the charge time. So I wanted to make note of that so you're aware of it and help you make a wise decision in this radio. Back to the program. Uh, but what I will say is even internally, where the battery connector meets the radio connector or uh, the board connector, there's a little rubber gar uh, grommet or washer in here. And that's probably to prevent moisture from coming into the radio, which is pretty nice. The plastics on this radio are something that is not like a Baofeng UV5R. In fact, this is probably more like a DM1801 from Baofeng if you're going to compare Baofengs or the GD77. The plastics are a little bit different and they're nice. Talking about the volume button here, the volume knob has a nice click to let you know that it's done. But then the volume button is pretty smooth, uh, nice and easy. But what I will say is I did have a problem where it wasn't very smooth. And the problem was, let me see if I can zoom in on this here real quick. Okay, so the problem was right now, this is completely pushed down. And when you have this completely pushed down, the volume button's really hard to turn. It's almost like there's some drag to it. But if I slightly use my fingers to bring it up a little bit, so there's a little bit of a gap there, that goes away and this becomes very smooth. So that's something to take into consideration. And I don't know if that would be fixed with a washer, but that's something we might be able to try in the future. 
The RT85 has the capability of up to 200 programmed memory channels, which to me isn't a huge deal. 128 with the Bofeng versus 200 with this radio. But I could see where some people would actually want 200 programmed channels, and that's kind of why I bring it up that this does have the capability to have more channels programmed. The speaker output on this is, the speaker is rated at greater than 750 milliwatts, uh, whereas the Bofeng is advertised as one watt. Let's take a look and just see how they sound. Um, so for example, I'm going to tune them both to NOAA Weather Radio, and I'll be right back. As a reference, I'm going to start with the UV5R, and I'm going to turn the volume up on NOAA Weather Radio to about halfway. to five to ten knots. Waves three to five feet, subsiding to two to four feet. Friday night, east wind five to ten knots. Very and now I'm going to go and do the same thing with the Redipus. Waves one to three feet. Saturday, south winds to thirty knots, increasing. Now, I know that, and I'm going to play them both at the same time here. Roughly halfway. Occasionally to nine feet, building to six to nine feet, occasionally to twelve feet. Night. South gales to 40 knots becoming it seems apparent to me that even though the Bofeng is advertised as a one watt speaker and the Redivis is advertised as greater than 750 milliwatts, uh, the superior audio quality goes to the Redivis. Uh, definitely think it sounds good. And as far as receive goes, they're about the same, to be completely honest. Uh, they both have a little static and NOAA weather radio, which from my distance isn't necessarily uncommon. Next, we're going to talk about the power output on the Redivis RT85, and it's advertised as two different modes, high power and low power, low power being one watt and high power being five watts. When I was going through this, however, I saw that there was a setting for three different power, high, medium, and low. So let's take a look and see what those settings actually are. And while I'm getting everything ready for the power, I think it's important again to note, I have in previous episodes that the connector on this radio is an SMA female, as opposed to the Bofungs, which are SMA males. So they're opposite. If you had antennas for the Bofung, you really couldn't just use them plug and play. You would need either an adapter or just get a new antenna. I thought that was important to mention again, and uh, let's jump into the power settings. For these tests, you can see I'm using a diamond antenna SWR power meter, and I'm going into a MFJ 300 watt dummy load. I'm operating the first test on 144.985 and I am on high power. This is W9 FFF testing, W9 FFF clear. And as you'll see, I was operating at just over five watts. So it definitely meets that requirement on high power. So now we're gonna go on to medium power. I was kind of curious about this one since it's not really advertised. This is W9 FFF testing, W9 FFF clear. And as you'll see, we're at two watts on mid-range power. And let's jump over to low power and I'm assuming we're gonna see a watt. W9 FFF testing, W9 FFF clear. And as you'll see, that was one watt of power. So very good. You have low power one watt, medium power two watts, and high power five watts uh, on VHF. Let's check UHF real quick. I'm doing a voiceover right here because I lost a little bit of my, my audio and I just wanted to have good audio, but you'll see on high power UHF 442.100, I almost had six watts of power. So that was pretty remarkable for a radio that claims five watts. And I went ahead now and I switched everything over to medium power and you'll see I have three watts on the medium range setting. And so again, pretty impressed. I didn't even think I was going to have a medium range setting to start with. And then we finish things off on low power and then low power we're seeing just over one watt, maybe a watt and a half. The power settings look pretty good. I was surprised to see that added medium power range. Uh, it's kind of like an added bonus, especially when it was advertised as only two power settings. So that's, that's great. I'm going to hook this thing up to a spectrum analyzer and I don't like to do this because to be 100% truthful, I'm not 100% with these analyzers, uh, but I do want to hook it up and we could at least get a C or a feel for how this thing is performing on the RF spectrum. This is the radio on VHF. And what I was doing is I had the five watts of power out to an attenuator and the attenuator out to the spectrum analyzer. Now ignore the DL line, that was for something else and I, I just didn't change it. But what I notice is there's not many spikes. So there's nothing that is really of significant interest as far as uh, spurious emissions go, in my opinion. Uh, let me take a look here though and pull up uh, a Baofeng UV5R. 
And I'm trying to be non-biased, but I think this speaks for itself. This is the 5R right here. Uh, again, ignore the DL line or whatever, but look at these considerable spikes at, at certain harmonics. Um, so just to keep in mind here, it looks like the Redivis RT85 just at first glance is, is pretty, pretty clean. Let's take a look here at the UHF side of things. And so uh, obviously there are a couple of little spikes or whatever, but I don't think that there's anything too significant in just at first glance. Uh, again, you compare it to that uh, Bofeng or Baofeng, however you want to pronounce it. And this radio produces a much cleaner signal. Next up, I took the stock antenna and I put it in the antenna analyzer. And I should mention that this analyzer is only good up to 230 megahertz. So the test was conducted in the two meter band and between 144 megahertz and 147 megahertz, I saw uh, the low end 144 megahertz, 2.1 SWR, and on the high end, a 3.5 SWR. So that's something to take into consideration. In the future, I'll try to upgrade this analyzer so that we can get better results and better data. Look, I've went over this radio now for a three-part series, and we've talked about programming. We talked about a brief overview. We went into the specifications. We hooked this thing up to test equipment. We are comparing it to the Baofeng UV5R, but now I'm actually kind of feeling that this might be a radio that should probably be more compared to the Yesu FT65 that I had. And I personally would love to hook up that Yesu FT65 and compare these two things, but I no longer have that radio. I gave it away. And speaking of giveaways, you could win this radio. All you got to do is subscribe to my channel. I will post a link to a live stream where I'll be giving this radio away within the next week or two. I'll post three, four days in advance saying that I'm doing a live stream giveaway on a certain date and time. And in the description of that video, I'll actually tell you, hey, if you want to win this radio, go comment on one of my other videos, which I'll specify. And as long as you comment, uh, only one comment will count, but you can comment anything. Good luck in the giveaway or your videos suck. You're a waste of 12 minutes of my life, whatever it could be. And you'll be entered for the drawing. Should you have any questions on the Redivis RT85 or any other questions in general, let me know. And I'm looking forward to hopefully doing some more reviews on the Redivis brand of radios in the future. I was pretty impressed with what they had to offer. But I'm going to leave you at that. So until next time, thanks so much for checking out the channel. We'll see you soon. I'm W9FFF, the ham radio dude, 73.